Hi there, thanks for joining me. I'm very excited because I'm going to be talking about all things Dale Rowney System 3. And in a minute, I'm gonna take you on my Wow Effects workshop. What does that mean? Well, it's all about incorporating all of the Dale Rowney art materials, all the System 3 art materials into one crazy piece of artwork. So we'll be using the acrylics, the um, original and heavy body, the inks, and even a bit of screen printing as well. So loads of colour and uh, loads of effect. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Jenny Moncaster. I'm a professional artist working from the Colour Factory Studios down in Winchester. And I'm passionate about sharing a lot of the techniques that I've developed in my own work as an artist. And it's very much um, process led so really easy to do and more about letting the art materials kind of do their thing, do their magic. So I'll be sharing some tips and tricks along the way and uh, showing you some really, really lovely techniques. But um, yeah, so first of all, I'll just really quickly whiz through the art materials that we're going to be using. So first of all, going to be looking at the System 3 acrylics, the original acrylics and uh, they're really lovely buttery consistency really smooth um, come in i think there's over 50 colors in metallics and fluorescence included as well what is not to like about that and they can be used on all sorts of different surfaces i mean you could paint literally anything and everything and they can be used indoors and outdoors so they're the they're the originals and then um something that's a little bit new to me the um, heavy body paints, the System 3 heavy body. And do you know what? I'm really loving these because we can get a lot more texture with them. And I really like to kind of like use that in my artwork, um, using a palette knife with them to create lots of texture and impasto techniques. So looking at those in the artwork um, in a minute. And then we've got the inks as well. So the System 3 inks and uh, very similar properties to all the acrylic paints, but in an ink. Really, really lovely. I think there's 26 colours. Um, yeah, so, um, and what's great about all of these art materials, you've got your inks, your original acrylics and your heavy body, is that all the colours are consistent across those art products. So if I'm using a magenta in the original acrylics, it will be the same in the inks, the same colour in the inks, and the same magenta in the heavy body. And that's actually really great, really good if you're into mixed media or um, using a limited palette and you know that your colour is going to be consistent across the range. Oh, and also, I've got to show you this. So we're going to be doing some screen printing as well. I'm going to grab the box, the box lid. Um, so the screen printing kit, uh, you can get really, really professional results with that. And it is very, very straightforward. It's, I promise you, it's really, really easy to do. So I'll be talking about that a little bit later on and showing you how we can incorporate it into that artwork. And again, all the, um, the acrylics and, and all the art materials that we're using in the screen printing as well, they're all water-based, so really safe to use. And you can print on fabric as well. Loving that. You're going to have your own little production line going. Um, so, okay, let's get started on the wow effects workshop so what am i uh using as a surface to paint on well i'm using the system 3 art board and it's really really sturdy um, and it's great because i'm going to be chucking a lot of paint and water and layering things up to me that is a great surface to work on and it comes pre-primed like that and it's even got a little um a slight linen texture to it so really robust and uh, that's what I'm going to be working on so I just think we should get going because I want to get a little bit of colour on here. So the first technique I'm going to show you is my little water technique and it's really good fun, really really easy. I'm going to take some colour. So I want to actually start off with a yellow colour so I've got some cadmium yellow in the originals and do you know what I'm simply going to chuck it on like this, put a bit in the middle. I want to coat my board really quickly. I'm not going to use a brush. I'm going to use a sponge. This is really easy to so take a clean sponge and just literally, look at that, bing, 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 bing. How easy is 
easy is that one coat you almost don't even need to look what you're doing and I think that is a lot easier than using a brush and taking ages to get some coverage there we go transformed uh, from white to yellow so that was just one even coat of the cadmium yellow with my sponge so that's the first layer now before we move on I've got to make sure that that layer of paint is dry so I've got me got me air dryer here I'm gonna give it a quick blast do that really really quickly and just check with my hand that no paint's coming off like that and do you know what the oh it's loud the um it doesn't have to be perfect that surface if you've got a few bits of white it, it really doesn't have to be perfect just to get a layer on for the effect just finish that off actually with a little bit of damp still get that glass yep yeah, i think that'll do and then the next color i'm gonna layer up i'm gonna take my turquoise so that's the uh, original system three as well and I'm not using a, a palette as such, but I've got an old ceramic plate here. I often use those as palettes. A uh, little bit on there like that. Right, now, this is where it starts to get interesting. So I'm gonna put my turquoise paint on in a second layer using the sponge again. I'll use the other side, the clean side. But the effect that I'm gonna do relies on a sort of dripping water effect while that paint layer is still wet and I'm going to be using a water spray but I just want to make sure before I start that that water spray is coming out okay because I've got a little window of opportunity while that paint is still wet and I don't want to miss out so let's just make sure yep yeah, that's working all right so it's coming out in a stream just check that that's ready to go got my sponge the clean bit Right, are we ready to go? I'm going to dip my sponge into the blue paint like that. And what I want to do is get one even layer on my board. So I've got to work really quickly. Let's go, let's go. Okay, go, 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 go. Put that on really quickly, really quickly. A little bit more, a little bit more. Cover, cover, cover. It's not about putting texture on with the sponge. It's just getting one even layer on. Oh, it's a bit of a workout. Get it on, get it on, get it on. And then <laughs> grab your water spray really quickly and dip, 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 dip. Get some drops on your canvas like that and get it covered not completely but just lots of little drops and so I don't know why I'm talking like that lots of little drops and spots like that so not flooding the board completely just getting this effect of these drops and spots like that so there we go that's sort of almost almost there but I want to add another little a little pattern of water. I'm going to put my hand in the water bucket and do a little bit of flicky. So get my hand in and just simply flick, 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 like that. Flick, 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 flick. And uh, yeah, so I've got these spots of water and then I've got these like little spatters on top while that blue paint is still wet. So you've got, you do have to work quickly with this. Don't start and then answer your phone or anything like that. You've got to kind of keep with the technique. Okay, so we've got the drops, we've got the spatter. And now, while that water's sitting on top, I'm just going to give it a little twizz around like that. Little bit of wobble. <laughs> Ooh. Quite like that wobble sound. Give it a little bit of wobble like that. And what have we got? Now, I don't know if you can see that, but there's kind of like a really interesting pattern where the water's kind of moved around and we've got that spattery and drippy effect. Kind of like in that. Okay, what do we do now? So the next stage of this is we've got to dry really dry that turquoise paint layer but keep the water wet so i've got a fly in me in my eye um so i'm going to take my hair dryer and give it a good blast but not for too long for about five or ten seconds 
dry the blue paint layer but keep the water wet so keep keep looking okay let's go let's go 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 so keep looking make sure you're not over drying just want to dry where the blue paint is i'm going to rank up the hair dryer a bit crank it up a bit and keep looking almost there so what will happen um, turn this off i just can't hear me um okay so what's going to happen whoop, i think that's probably about right in order to check that you've kind of got it right is just make sure have a little look at eye level and the water should be glossy and wet and shiny still and the blue paint kind of goes matte where it's drying i think that's about right right take not that dirty old sponge that is going in the bucket down there to wash i want a clean bit of sponge just gonna give it a little bit of water and uh, squeeze most of it out so just damp sponge and then it's a case of sweeping the wet layer of water away and we'll see what we get we're we ready to go mm, fingers crossed it's going to work and take your sponge and sweep the water layer away let's have a little bit more um, clean water on the sponge as we do this and again mm. Kind of liking that effect and again just keep going across your board taking that wet paint layer away like that and rinsing your sponge out I mean I don't know if you can see but actually that turquoise paint is on the sponge and we want to keep cleaning the sponge otherwise you're just putting a, a dirty paint layer back on your artwork let's go the other way and turn my sponge just taking that blue paint layer away and again it's got a bit more effect put a bit away into it actually as it starts to dry i can start to um, use my sponge to take that top layer off and reveal the yellow paint so that was that cadmium yellow that we started off with mm, every time you do this it's going to be different depending on what happens to the water, what kind of pattern the water makes. So just use your sponge. Mm, that is amazing. It's almost like a, a sort of batik effect. Like that. So you can see the spatters and the drips making the pattern. Right, I think I've done enough cleaning of that layer let's have another look lovely effect okay i need to dry this layer because i'm going to do that again but with a different color and in a slightly different way so a bit of hair drying again just dry the paint i'm so patient i always have a hair dry because i can never wait for anything to dry with my artwork get the hair dryer out going to say about acrylic paint is that once it's dry it's pretty much water resistant which is why we can use these acrylics outdoors as well and also why my um, apron is covered in paint and even if it's gone in the washing machine it's not going to come off so that's why if you like that first layer of design that you've got dry it make sure it's really dry before you do the next one so it doesn't doesn't come away Okay, let's do that again but with a different colour. I'm going to take my magenta now. Let's get a little bit of that on my um, plate. And another sponge. And just make sure that's not too wet. Make sure it's not dripping. So you'll, you'll notice that I haven't added any water with the paints because they're just lovely as they are straight out of the tube for this technique. Into the pink. 
This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. So I won't go everywhere with the magenta. I'm going to do mm, a kind of like a little sort of randomy thing across like that. Again, work quickly. Oh, work quickly. She says, come on, get that next layer on. It's quite nice when you can see a little bit of the layer underneath as well. A little bit more on there. Sort of randomly put on oh, quick, get me, get me water. Right, this time I'm going to use a plastic cup. Get it in the water. I'm going to make a pattern with the water using the, the rim dipped in the water. I must remember to work quickly so that pink layer that magenta paint doesn't dry get it in there and a nice bit of pattern where the water is just sitting on the rim of that cup and i can just about see it a little bit there and you sometimes have to kind of get your artwork in the right light so you can see what's going on with this water a little bit more maybe then whoop, a little bit more I think that's about about right so you might just be able to see the water sitting on top hold it sort of at eye level to, to check and then again it's out with that hairdryer again drying that magenta paint but keeping the water wet so don't over dry you'll get this <laughs> You'll do it one or two times and you will totally get this, I promise you. It's just lovely each time you do this. Playing around with colour and effect. So keep looking. Give it a good try. Always check with your finger. Just getting the drying times right. Keep looking, make sure your water's wet. I think that's about right. Don't sweep away with that sponge because it's got the pink paint on it in the bucket. Let's grab a clean one. A little bit of water on there because I want to clean off the water and painty layer. So let's have a look at this, see what we've got. Ready? Ooh. And again, just keep going. Ooh, nice. And again, so just cleaning the sponge as we go and gently pull it through. Wow, like that little effect. So that's our magenta layer on with the cup, uh, making those lovely little prints. Really, really lovely. Just give it a little dab. And then I need to uh, dry it again before I do the next layer, which I think I'm gonna get a screen print out. Give it a dry. that's probably enough. Yeah, you can really see the rings where the, where the cup has made that pattern. Mm. Right, I think, yeah, let's get that screen out and have a little go with that. So, a la Blue Peter style, here's one I did earlier. Um, it is, I promise you, it really is quite straightforward, the process of creating a screen and you do get brilliant results. Um, so I've just sort of taken a pattern and repeated it across because I want to make it quite um, quite sort of decorative this piece and I'm just going to lay it down on top of my artwork and uh, so it's really really easy to create the screen so basically all you're doing with your sort of open mesh to start off with is whatever design you're going to do, you paint it in with, with your drawing fluid, which is in a little pot like that. Wait for that to dry. And when that's dry, um, pull some screen block across your screen with a squeegee. That's that sort of lovely red um, ox bloody sort of color. And you're pulling that across. 
let that dry and then we wash the screen and where your drawing fluid was actually washes out and reveals the um, empty, the, the mesh, the clear mesh. So that's how you get your design and that's where our printing ink is going to go through, the open mesh. So it's really, really easy, I promise you. <laughs> Okay, so where do I want this design? Let's kind of put it to one side across, just a strip across, I think. I don't know, let's yeah, put it on there. Okay, and I've pre-mixed a little bit of screen printing ink up in my pot. And again, we have some screen printing medium and you can choose any colour from the uh, System 3 acrylic range, mix it up about 50-50 and uh, yeah, give it a good mix in the pot. I've just chosen white because I really want it to show up. This is going to be a bit of a crazy colourful piece of art. I just want all the layers to show up so you can see. So yeah, mix it 50-50 with acrylic and, and the medium and you're ready to go. So let's put some of that down and you don't actually need too much. There we go. And we're going to pull it through with Miss Squeegee. There's Miss Squeegee. Pop it down like that and simply pull it through. It's quite exciting, this. Like that. Just going to take the excess uh, ink and just pop it back in my pot because you can use that again and again so always not want not put that back in there like that and then going to lift it up and show you like that put that there for a minute there we go <laughs> i love it just really, really beautiful bit of pattern. So it could be any design that you want to. So another layer of effect. It's great to be using all these things together. Now that's gonna take a few minutes to dry. And while that's dry, I'm gonna go and wash my screen out. Well, the print's all dry now. And my screen's washed and ready to use again another time as well. And I wanna do another layer of effect and uh, oh something I bought from home my grouting tool um, I'm hoping that if I pull this through some wet paint it's going to make quite an interesting um, layer of effect you could use a, a wide tooth comb or um, or in fact just use the end of a end of a paintbrush pulled through paint so let's have a little go with that so I want to do a layer on the on the side there I'm just going to get a little bit of scrap um, paper and a brush and some of that heavy body paint again get a bit of yellow on there I'm going to add a little bit of white into the mix as well and uh, I'm just going to do a quick sort of painted strip along that edge just make sure that's about the width of me width of my grouting tool and again we've got to work quite quickly here because I don't want that paint to dry before I um, take my tool through to make an effect okay let's go let's go so get a layer on just with that big brush got a bit of white in there as well <laughs> just see what happens Play around with sort of any color palette that you want to I quite like those, oh, I quite like that streaky bit in as well. I grab my tool and pull it through like that. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, I quite like that. That's quite a nice effect, just simply using that, that tool or anything, anything similar. I quite like the way that other colours, the uh, water techniques peeping through. Right, that can go in my bucket to wash. Use that again. Right, I want to do something on this side now. Um, oh, other things that I bought in. So, packaging, bubble wrap. I'm sure you've done a little bit of printing with bubble wrap before. I love this technique. It's so simple. 
I'm going to use the same colours. Look, I've got that yellow and white again. So taking my uh, one inch brush and just gently taking it across the surface of the bubble wrap. So you don't want to sort of dig it in and uh, get the paint in, in the texture. You just want it to sit on top because that's where you want your pattern to come out. So something like that. You could use um, any sort of packaging cardboard, cardboard strips for, for printing as well. That's quite good. Right, where should we put this? Let's put a bit up there, about there, and simply push it down like that. I quite like it when things overlay, go on top of each other. We'll just see what we get, shall we? Just so you can see and pull away. Yeah, that's come out quite nicely. Let's do that again. So I'm going to do that again with a little bit more um, somewhere else. Let's have a think. Where can we do that? Oh, I'm going to use a little bit more of that white. Let's have a little bit coming in the corner, just playing around with the layered effect. Oh, maybe just a little bit there as well. Pull away. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and that can go in my bucket to wash use again so you can see how we're layering up uh, texture and colour and pattern right what should we do now oh, okay yes I know um, this is a really really lovely idea using the heavy body acrylics because um, they've got that lovely sort of slightly thicker um, consistency and I love to use stencils in my artwork it's something that i do quite a lot with pattern overlaying pattern and effect i mean you could cut your own stencils as well so you could sort of make your own patterns let's have a go with this one i'm going to put some oh let's go for a bit of red let's go for something bold i don't know and a bit of yellow i'm going to put some more yellow on my palette as well and where should we do this i'm going to do one right over that circle pattern because I like the idea of overlaying. Right, should we go for that? It's a bit bold. Let's go for the, oh, let's take a bit of that yellow. We picked up a bit of the yellow there and we'll see what happens. And simply take your palette knife and your paint and just gently, kind of like icing a little biscuit Mary Berry, you better watch out. So, oh look, I'm sort of varying my colour there. I quite like that. Oh, bit of that one. Oh, what have I got on there? A little bit more of that red. So you can do this as thick or as sort of thin as you like, just depending on how much pressure you put on your palette knife. Get that in there, get that in there, get that in there. A bit more yellow. Ooh, oh, I'm going a bit thick there. Quite like that. A bit meaty. And then I'm going to hold this up. I think you can see. Can I grab a corner? Let's see if I can grab a corner and pull away. Mm, how's that come out? Oh, nice. I kind of quite like the way that overlays. Let's do another one. Can I do another one? Let's do, let's do one. Oh, we're kind of like going to fit it in on the corner there. So just peeking through from the corner. Oh, I've got quite a bit on there. Oh, what am I like? I can't resist a bit of meaty texture. And I quite like that pattern, the way we're sort of repeating the pattern. So. This is the yummy bit. This is the sort of wow bit, really. And pull away. Oh, I went right thick with the paint there. Oh, I love it. Should we do another one? One more. Okay, one more. One more. And a, and a little bit of yellow. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to get some of that white as well. I quite like it when you've got a little bit of a, a pop of colour. So let's just go with a bit of bit of white in there as well. I'm making this up as I go along. So let's have one coming in from the bottom. Oh, look at that. So just experiment, just experiment with colour and effect. 
So you can't really go wrong. There are no mistakes with this and it is just paint after all. Ooh, I don't know how this one's going to come out. Let's take that away. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I kind of quite like that. That is a real uh, zing of colour. Gorgeous. Right, that stencil can go in my bucket to wash as well and, and I'll reuse that. Right, what shall we do now? Oh, a little bit more printing, I think. And uh, so we, we're looking at the bubble wrap, things that you could possibly find around the, the house. Um, cups, plastic cups, paper cups. Um, what else could we use? Cork, oh, I've got some corks here. Oh, this is interesting. This is um, that insulating foam that goes around your pipes. And that can make a really interesting print. Let's have a look at that. That can go in the, in the water to wash. Right, let's get some more colour. Oh, I've got a little bit of white there, but I'm going to add some of my blue heavy body now. You sometimes, I don't worry too much if I kind of mix a few colours together or I've got a little bit of a colour on the brush that I wasn't planning. Just sort of go with it, really. Let's have a go with this cup. So just using that rim again. So this is the cup that we used uh, to do the water technique. So let's have a little go putting some of that heavy body on and thinking where we could do this. Again, picking on, up on that sort of circle theme. Mm, just playing around, that's quite nice. Let's do a little bit more of that. I'm gonna go with a bit darker. So again, just painting the rim of the cup like that. Let's do a few over here as well, bringing that design through, maybe a little one down there. Oh, I don't know, we could keep going and going. Let's have a go with these, um, with this foam. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go in a bit darker there. And I'm just gonna kind of put it straight in the paint and uh, see what we get, or oh, a little bit of that white. Where should we go with this? Where should we go with this? Let's do a little group along the bottom there. Oh, that is very satisfying using that foam. I want to do that again. Dip it in. Let's do, oh, something down here as well. It's kind of spongy and painty and <laughs> delicious. So a little bit of that going on. Oh, I've got my cork as well. Oh, I'm going to go in with the white. Oh, get that in there. There's an excuse to um, open another bottle of wine tonight. I need some more corks. Where should we go with this one? I'm going to go along the top. So kind of going with this little circle theme. Let's go around that textury bit as well. Playing around, having a bit of fun. Should I do a bit more? Let's go down here as well. So cork, all sorts of things uh, that we can print with and just building up our pattern and our, um, and our design. Right, so we've done the heavy bodies, we've done a bit of printing. Oh, let's have a look at the inks. Let's just finish up with a little pop of colour from those uh, pots of ink. And um, I'm actually going to start off, having said that, I'm going to start off with something quite, quite bold. So I'm going to take the black and um, I've got a little idea for this. Um, where's my brush? Oh, here it is. This is, this is my fan brush. And um, traditionally, artists would use something like that for creating some really nice effects in their sort of landscapes, maybe uh, for creating sort of leaves on trees and foliage for, for softening paint, maybe in clouds. So they're really, they're, they're sort of quite funny brushes, aren't they? But um, I'm going to use mine for something a little bit different and I'm going to use black only because I just really want it to show up so you can see how this works. So get something really kind of graphic um, happening. So take the brush and I'm going to pop it into the ink like that, give it a good old dip in and then you can see that. I'm just going to kind of take it across the rim of the pot and you'll see that the bristles 
have separated and uh, created quite a nice little pattern there. So before that dries, I'm going to take it through an area of the artwork. So where should we go? I'm going to hold the end and just do a nice sweep through. Let's just go, oh, should we do through here? A kind of sweep through like that. Oh, and I kind of really love the way it creates those very kind of solid, fine lines all in sort of like little train tracks. Let's do that again. I'm going to do another one. Pop that in there. Ideally, we'd wait for our paint layer to dry, but I'm just kind of going for it. I just, I love this little um, technique and I've become very fond of this fan brush. Let's do another one. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go in the other corner, uh, something across. Okay, so let's just go across this little corner here. Mm, like that. So all those little fine lines created with the bristles from that fan brush. Do you know what? I think that'd be quite difficult to do, to replicate that with a tiny brush, keep doing all the lines. In fact, I don't really use um, little tiny brushes for very much at all. I love that. That's that fan brush and the ink. And finally, I can't resist because I do like a little bit of pink. I like a bit of something fluorescent in the uh, System 3 ink. Let's have a little look at this. Um, now it comes with a little dropper, so I want to try and just do a little few drops. Let's just see if I can do a few little drops over that black um, line work. So take the ink out and do a little bit of spattery. Ooh, here we go. I never quite know how this is going to come out, either in one blob or a few little. Oh, let's get a bit more like that. Ooh, ooh, yes. And a little bit over that one as well little bit of, I love that pop of fluorescent pink. It's mad, isn't it? And we could even make that splatter kind of splat a bit more with the straw. I love this. Let's give it a little blow with the straw and see what we get. Mmm, yes, I'm liking that. Let's do a little bit there as well. Let's get right on this. I kind of like it over that um, that black. Really nice. I wonder if we can hold this up without it dripping too much. I love, have a little go with the straw and the ink, seeing what different effects you can get building it up. Yum. And last but not least, because I like a bit of bling, I've got to have a little bit of gold on there. Just a few little flicky bits here and there. And uh, with my pipette, if I can do that, ooh, 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 a little bit of flicky with the gold. Oh, that is nice. I like that. Oh, flicky, flicky, flicky over the, that texture. Mm, that was nice. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Let's get another little, I'm going to do another splat with that. Make it run. That is gorgeous. Oh, actually, I quite like that. I'm going to do another one of those. Bing, 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 bing. And do you know what? <laughs> I think that is so much fun. I've had fun. I hope um, I've inspired you. Just, oh, this, this is going to drip. But let's have a, a little look at those. All those lovely layers of colour and effect. So much fun and so easy to do. Well, I hope I've inspired you with all things Dale Rowney System 3. And the main thing is to have a go, have fun, keep creating, and I'll see you soon.